Hello everybody, it's Tarkon. I'm back with another viewer comment video. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. Maybe a week or two. I can't really remember. Um, it's been a busy week. I um, We're having really beautiful sort of summer preview weather around here. It's just been gorgeous all week. So I've been doing a lot of stuff outside and doing some yard work later today building planter boxes for this lady so that's going to be fun so i'm going to be in the sun a lot um and if you haven't noticed i haven't been uploading a lot uh in about a week um uh, and that's because i've just been wanting to be outside and maybe one of these days soon if the weather holds i'll do a little video outside because the park is right down the street and it's beautiful maybe i'll give you guys a little preview of the park there's ducks and there's a duck pond and all kinds of stuff big beautiful trees anyway um, yeah, and you know, I don't know where you guys are living. If you're in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, of course, spring is here. So happy spring, everybody, and, you know, enjoy your spring fever, because that's, that's a big part of uh, that, that this changing in seasons, right? I've been feeling it quite a bit. Uh, there's been a lot of energetic shifting going on, and my personal physical energy is sort of skyrocketing through the roof. Um, so I have all this, you know, I want to get this done, I want to do that done, get that done. And so I've been running around doing things and just not having a little rough time relaxing uh, because, you know, winter gets, winter was pretty cold this year. So I was kind of in hibernation mode. Uh, but now, you know, that vitamin D is hitting my skin. So I've been wanting to run around and do this and do that and be outside and meet so-and-so and be more social and all that kind of stuff. So it's a fun time of the year. Uh, you know, you get that. There's Spring is all about renewal and hope and growth, right? And rebirth. Um, so that's uh, that can be a very... Uh, that can be a good energy to have, especially when you're trying to manifest love, because it is the season for love, isn't it? All right. So let's get into uh, a couple of your comments, and I'm going to try to um, get to as many of them as I can. It's There's been... There's, there are a lot they've accumulated, so uh, I'll try to I'll try to get into some of these briefly, and um, hopefully I won't miss any important ones. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, let's begin here. Uh, Spring Daisy writes a short one. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, however, my ex is in another city, and we don't speak. I can only hope for a call or text as a start. Well, Spring Daisy, first of all, the the uh, energy of hope is is an energy of begging it's an energy of not really being certain about the outcome right and and part of we always say hey belief is important and faith is important and that's where this comes in if you're always asking and hoping and begging and waiting you're in a mindset you're in a sort of vibration and you're in a you're focused on something not being there and a, a huge part of manifesting um, is to really get your mind into a place of believing and feeling, get yourself into a place of feeling as if something's already there that you want without it actually physically being there. And that's kind of the challenge, isn't it? That's a very challenging thing for most of us to do because we are so used to our whole lives <clears throat> looking for that external feedback, right? And now we come along and say, well, there's another way to do things. And that is to see the external world as nothing more than a reflection of your inner state. So if you're sitting around hoping for a text or a call, and if you're thinking and believing and telling yourself that's the only way that the two of you can come back together again, well, then that's what's going to reflect back to you. You're always going to be waiting and hoping for a call and a text. You need to start shifting your thinking, and it'll take some practice and some time, and you have to be patient with that. But that's okay. All right, it's good that we have that buffer of time so that we can readjust ourselves in our inner state. You need to get into a feeling of it already being there. Now, what what does that mean? I mean, if if you're if if he is texting and calling you on a regular basis, would you be sitting around hoping for the next text or hoping for the next call or thinking about when is it coming? No, because it's happening. So you go about your day and you're happy and you're kind of happy-go-lucky and you don't really worry about it too much. You're relaxed about it, right? So in this case, even just pretending, even if you're not quite ready to feel it yet, 
but the feeling will eventually follow the more you do this. Um, you want to start thinking, what would it feel like if this was happening? You know, if, if he was in another city. And by the way, him living in another city doesn't matter at all. Distance doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. So don't even worry about that, okay? You need to stop thinking about him being in another city. You need to stop thinking about whether he's going to call you, when he's going to call you or text you. All that is putting your focus and attention on it not happening. Do you see? What are you putting your thoughts on? You're putting your attention and your thoughts on it not being here. He's not texting. He's another city. He's in another city, so we can never come back together. Things can change all the time, and they do change all the time. All right? So don't even worry about that. You need to stop thinking about what is. The what is part is the thing for us to let go of. And so many of your comments have that element to it. And I understand it completely. It's very difficult, especially if you're beginning with this stuff. It really takes some time and patience with yourself and a little bit of effort and a little bit of concentration on your part and practicing this this stuff to, of letting go, not paying so much attention to the what is. And, and, and in that case, often what's really beneficial, what's most beneficial is to just try to stop thinking about the person altogether. Because if every time you think about them you feel down or you feel like there's no hope or you feel desperate, then you're just perpetuating that energy. So the best thing for you to do is is to just distract yourself with other things, things that you enjoy. If you enjoy your work, your job, then do that, focus on that. If you enjoy hanging out with your friends or doing whatever, playing with your cat, whatever it is, do whatever you can to just get yourself into a place of not, not being so overly concerned, so having your thoughts so oversaturated with them and what they're doing and where they're at. Remember, you're living your life and you need to focus on your life and you're just as important as they are. So you need to make yourself the center of your stage, all right, and work on that part of yourself, because think about it, when they come back, and then you're sort of like, you haven't really been working on yourself, what's going to happen then, yeah, um, you need to take this time to kind of really get yourself centered, get yourself focused on you, not so much them, and don't worry about the external reality and the physical reality, it's just a reflection of your inner state, if you're worried about distance between you two, physical distance, then physical distance will continue to be, and it will seem to get even further, and you'll seem to get physically further apart. If you're worried about the only hope here is that he texts me and contacts me, well, that's what you're going to be doing. You're just going to be sitting around waiting for them to do that um, and not working on yourself, right? You're putting way too much focus on another person, and you're just as important. In fact, in your life, you are the most important person. So you need to start loving yourself and appreciating yourself and accepting yourself the way things are and start from there, okay? Hope that helped you. <clears throat> Let's see here. Ophelia, and this is going to be something similar. Ophel Ophelia. Uh, so how can you change the thought of he doesn't initiate contact? What did I just say to uh, Spring Daisy? Right? You need to stop thinking about whether they're contacting you or not. This is so important. And I know it's, you know, a, a big part of this, I understand, is this sort of the obsession with thinking about them and what they're doing. It can feel exciting. All right? It can feel exciting to focus on somebody else and how do they think about me? And, and there's something kind of uh, adventurous about that. All right? Kind of interesting about that. Um, but it's also kind of, you know, listen, you, you capitalize the word can. How can you change your thought? Ah. Yeah, do you see the energy behind that? It's impatience. It's, it's, I need this to happen. How can I have this happen? It's frustration, right? It's desperation. You need to stop, start shifting the focus away from that. All right? You, want, you need him to initiate contact. Why do you need him to initiate contact? Why don't you initiate contact? See, there's the ego that comes in. And I've done this too. Again, I'm not judging anybody. I know how this works. But you're seeing yourself as somehow not valid, not, uh, you're not, you don't feel attractive unless he makes you feel attractive. You don't feel wanted and loved unless he displays some type of, some type of activity, some kind of initiation, something that makes you feel that way. You're still asking and waiting for him to give you permission to love yourself and accept yourself. That's not his charge. That's your charge, okay? Because that's not, if even if he does initiate contact and you get back together, 
what kind of relationship will it be? It'll be completely out of balance because one person has the responsibility for both people being happy. That's not a relationship, okay? That's an addiction is what that is, all right? So you need to stop focusing so much on what he's doing. What's he initiating? You need to start everything, especially manifesting specific people, is all about you. It starts with you. And I'm going to keep saying that. And it's going to frustrate some people. They want the one, two, three steps. Give me the 12 steps. All the people giving the 12 steps out there, they don't really care about this stuff. They're just making money, okay? And there's nothing wrong with making money, but understand the difference between real manifesting and how this works. It's a lifestyle and it's a mindset. And the whole idea of give me the formula and if I follow it, it will happen. There's no doubt you can do this. You can manifest a specific person, but you need to change your focus. You need to shift your focus away from them, especially if you're very much attached to them right now. Uh, if you're very much putting all of your happiness and all of your eggs in one basket, you're putting it all on their shoulders, they can feel that energetically. Nobody wants to be put in that position, okay? I was in this shit for so long. I asked the guy and he replied, this is who I am. I don't initiate contact or once a few months. So what do I have inside? I guess, what do I have to change inside me that reflects this specific behavior? Again, you have to let go of him, of needing him to behave a certain way. That's what it comes down to. And, and you know what? The, I know that maybe you're hoping for something that sounds easier to do. This is going to be difficult at first, but it will get easier as you put your focus, you pull your focus away from him and the situation and you put it on yourself. It will get easier because you'll get happier. You'll become calmer. You'll accept and love yourself more. You won't put so much pressure on other people to make you feel good about yourself because that's what this really comes down to. <clears throat> what you really want is a feeling. You're after a feeling. And maybe the last reference point that you have for the, having had that feeling is this relationship that you had with somebody. And they made you feel a certain way, but really it wasn't them. You made yourself feel that way when you were with them. And you just used them as a permission slip to make yourself feel that way. And now that they're gone, you feel like it was them. It wasn't you all along, but it was you all along. You can still reach that feeling without them being there. And, the, and when you do, and when you do it consistently... Not only will they come bouncing back in your life, but so many others will. You'll certainly be having to slam doors on everybody because you won't have some, enough time for everybody. Your dance card is going to fill up uh, like never before. All right? So it starts with you. That's what you change. That's what you change inside yourself. All right? Your perception about yourself and this this need to have somebody behave a certain way for you to be happy and feel accepted and loved. All right? That's what you need to change. You need to change your relationship with yourself. And stop thinking about what he's doing. Other people do initiate contact with me because you don't care so much about those people. That's why. You don't care as much about those people as you do about him. And so... Take a, take a clue from that, right? Why, why is it so easy to get people to contact you that you don't really care if they contact you or not? Because you don't have as much resistance towards them. You're not sitting around all day wondering when they're going to contact you. And with him, you put him on a pedestal. You made him something extra special. You made, this, you made your happiness dependent on whether he contacts you or not. And you've decided already that if he doesn't, you're going to be unhappy, damn it. That's why. That's how this stuff works. When you let go, when you stop pushing so hard, when you stop focusing so hard on him, then you're allowing the space, the energetic space for him to contact you and come in. You need to treat him the same way you treat the others in your mind. You need to make yourself more important. In your life, you're the important one, not him, all right? So, and also she says, I tried affirming he does initiate contact, didn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? Just repeating the words isn't going to work if you don't feel them. Because you're going, he's initiating contact, he's initiating contact, he's initiating contact. And then you look around and go, 
where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So what are you focused on 90% of the time? <laughs> you're focused on the fact that he's not initiating contact. You can repeat that until you're blue in the face. If you're not feeling it, then it's not going to happen. Stop doing the affirmations until you feel better about this. Until you work on yourself, stop focusing on him altogether. Focus on other things. And most importantly, focus on yourself. What's going to make you happy? What makes you happy? What hobbies do you have? What activities make you happy? What are you passionate about? Focus on that. And as you do, you'll shift your focus away from him. That gives him room to kind of energetically move closer towards you. Because right now he's saying, I don't initiate contact because you can feel your desperation. And it's off-putting. It's energetically off-putting. Maybe he doesn't, he's not consciously aware that's what's happening. But on an energetic level, on a spiritual level, that's precisely what's happening. Okay? I hope that helps. So much of this is just calming down and relaxing. And it's really easy to do. I mean, manifesting people and money, in the end, after you've sort of gone through the whole struggling with it all and you just relax a little bit, sometimes even when you just give up, suddenly something shifts, suddenly something moves. Maybe you've experienced that before. It's actually easy. That You keep at it, the day will come when you'll realize just how easy it is. And then it won't matter anymore. Because then you can realize, oh, I can manifest anything I want with anyone I want. Maybe that person isn't, won't be that important to you anymore. It's happened to me. I tell you, it's very liberating. <clears throat> Angela V, this is something very similar. She has a question. I keep seeing my ex with someone else, and it's in my mind. I don't like it. How can I stop this? Well, you know, again, you're focused on him being with someone else. The, the, these three comments I just read have something very similar in common. So it's, he's in another city. He's not initiating contact. I keep seeing him with somebody else. Now, I don't know if you're physically seeing him with somebody else or if you're saying that in your mind you're seeing him with somebody else. Oh, it is in my mind, so I think what you're doing is you keep imagining him with somebody else. Well, that's, again, a fear. That's a resistance that you have, that you're not good enough. Right? That's a fear that you're not good enough. He's going to see that you're not good enough for him. Somebody else is better than you. So you're comparing yourself to other people. In this case, even people that you don't necessarily know exist. So you're making up this thing. So you're, you have a, a big block inside yourself that's saying that you're not good enough for somebody to love you and accept you and want to be with you and, and to choose you, right? So you need to shift that. That's, again, this is about you. This is about shifting your perception of yourself. This is about building your self-esteem, your confidence, your love of yourself, your acceptance of yourself, seeing yourself as a catch. I'm a catch, damn it. If you want to affirm something, and this is for all, all of you guys there, not just for Angela, but if you want to affirm something, and really work on something. Affirm this. I am a catch. I am a catch. Uh, Agnes Vivarelli says, I am first best, not second best. Right? And I love that. In my life, I'm first best. You see yourself as a catch. You start thinking about what is, what is it like to be in a relationship with me? Right? Take the focus away from the other person. Put it on yourself. Remember, the first person and the last person you have a relationship with in life is you. That's the relationship you need to work on, you need to foster. That's the most important relationship you're ever going to be in on this earth. And everybody else is just there to show you at which level you're at with yourself. That's all they're there for, really. Right? And you're doing that for them as well. I think this is why we are in human relationships. To be a kind of a mirror for each other. Right? So if, if these other people are not behaving a certain way that you want them to, think about, first of all, why you need the, to, them to behave that way. Second of all, how can you change your perception of yourself that you don't need them to behave a certain way anymore? That you can satisfy that need inside yourself and start seeing yourself as lovable, as, as deserving of love, deserving of acceptance. You choose yourself, right? And then watch other people choose you. Okay? I am a catch. I'm worth it. I'm beautiful. I'm sexy. I'm fun. I'm intelligent. I'm witty. I'm great. I'm, I'm great fun to be around. This is the kind of thing you affirm. Okay? Stop affirming things like, 
he's going to text me, he's going to text me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. Start switching that around and see if that helps you. And really start think, uh, thinking of and feeling this. Uh, when you say it, you really need to feel it, right? And if you don't feel it right away, keep doing it anyway, but keep searching for the feeling of it. And probably what's going to start coming up is it'll make you feel a little wonky, a little weird, right? Maybe a little bit anxious when you say things like, I'm worthy of love, right? I'm a catch. And if you start feeling like a little weird and anxious about that, that shows you that you have a lot of resistance towards yourself there, that you have a belief inside of yourself that you've practiced over time that you're not worthy, that you're not a catch, that other people are better than you, that you're lacking in some way. That's the thing to change, okay? That's the thing to work on. In the end, if you're struggling this hard and you're sitting around all day wondering when, when, are the, when is he going to call me, when is she going to call me, that's a huge indication that you're focused in, in, on the wrong thing. You need to be focusing on yourself at that point. You need to be working on yourself and your self-love, right? But how can I love myself if they don't love me? Ah, there you go. That's the catch-22. You have to love yourself in, for, in order for them to love you because that's giving them permission to love you, right? You don't need their permission to love yourself. Huh, let's see here. Call me Margarita. Okay, I will. <laughs> uh, hi, I've been manifesting my ex back. Yes, you have. You've already done it. Um, so there it worked. So there it worked, and we have been close, but I dropped the question about our status. I'm guessing you asked your ex about your status. And there he told me again that he still loves me, but he has some resistance to be in a relationship again. No, the resistance is yours. Now what's happening is, and I've said this again and again, I've been watching my videos, him saying that is just a reflection of you saying that. Ah, so what you expect, right? What you expect is difficulty what you what you how you see yourself is as someone who's not deserving of being with your ex secretly subconsciously that's how you see yourself therefore the need to ask him in other words you're asking him permission right i to permission to feel good about yourself to feel happy to feel relief Right to feel at peace about the situation, you're asking him to give. So what about our status? And you're hoping that he'll say yes, or say, yes, I love you, and I want to be with you, so that you can give yourself permission to love yourself and accept yourself. You're still, you're actually, you're actually literally asking him permission, and he's saying, I don't know, I don't know, I have a lot of resistance being in a relationship again. Well, that resistance is yours, All right, Margarita? It's your resistance. He's just a sort of a vehicle to show you that and to reflect that back to you. So again, you need to work on what's inside of you. You need to work on that self-perception. Look at these. So many of these comments are have that have that theme. Have you seen the last three, four comments have a very similar theme? A lot of these actually have a very similar theme, and it comes down to one thing. And I'm I'm afraid it's not going to be. It's not an easy answer. Maybe not the answer you were hoping for. It comes down to changing yourself and your perception of yourself. It has to be that way. So there I ruined it, I guess. So what now? You didn't ruin anything. There's no ruining here. Nothing's over. Nothing is too late. It's This popped up to show you where your resistance lies. The area that you need to work on is yourself and your perception of yourself. The universe knows what you want. Your higher self is very well aware of what you want. It can, it can feel you wanting this thing, but it can't just hand it to you. You have to be a cooperative component in that equation. It needs you to help it out to give you what you want. So it's, and it's wanting to give you that, all right? It's wanting to give you that, but it can't do it, it because you're blocking the shit. So you, it has to show you where you're blocking it. And it's hoping that you'll get the message and get the clue and do the work on that part to unblock that, those blocks so that it can give you what it's been wanting to give you. It's itching to give it to you. All right? It's been waiting for you. It's all lined up for you, like Abraham says. It's all lined up for you. You are the cooperative component that's missing in the equation. 
you're offering the resistance and the blockages. So that's what you need to work on unwinding, untangling, if you will, right? You work on your own self-perception and self-love and self-acceptance. That's how you, that's what you do now. Because you said, what should I do now? That's what you do now. That's the thing to do. And you'll know when the time is right. You'll know when you feel better. Things will start to shift. And you'll notice that. All right? And when it happens, understand it's because you've shifted, not because they've shifted. These are great, actually, by the way. I love these comments because, you know, it's easy to see that everyone's kind of in the same boat. You know, those of you watching silently out there right now, and you're going, oh, maybe you're going, oh, God, yeah, I feel that way too. Oh, I see that. Oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. So, that, you know, this is good because it helps. It, it kind of helps everybody out there, right? <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, Leila. Leila Idrizovich. I, I think I said that right. Um... I noticed how I get frustrated because something I wanted manifest did not happen for so long. Of course, impatience is a big part of not believing. Mm. That's Patience comes when you actually have faith in the thing, right? That it's coming, that it's already done, that you don't need to worry about it anymore. Manifesting is nothing more than setting a desire and then just kind of letting it go and going about your day and then letting it come and not worrying about when it comes, right? Patience, patience, patience. Um, because I needed to at least release the situation where a specific person got mad and just cut off all contact and I didn't know the real reason. Well, probably there was something, again, uh, everyone is you pushed out. It's a reflection of something going on inside of yourself. When these kinds of things happen, people don't just suddenly become mad for no reason, right? Um, probably there's some blockage in you. Maybe you were, you were afraid of pissing them off or you were afraid that they were going to uh, uh, leave you or cut off contact with you. Maybe there was a subconscious fear in you that kept kind of being reinforced. And oftentimes we have these fears and they don't, uh, we're not consciously aware of them. So later we go, well, I wasn't feeling that way or I wasn't thinking that way, but actually the whole time you kind of wore in the background. And if you sort of sit down and think about it, you can see, ah, yeah, that's true, right? <clears throat> I realize I've been focusing too much on a lack of this situation. Yeah, then that's precisely what I've been talking about. And that's the thing, you know, we, this, is all, uh, this is all about going from a, a, a lack mindset to an abundance mindset. But what's abundance? Abundance isn't just a bunch of love and a bunch of money. Your love for yourself is also abundance, right? Your life is full of abundance. So you need to start looking at where, that's, where your life is already abundant and focus on that and focus on being satisfied with that and happy about that and even celebrating that. And then more of this abundance will come. Friendships are abundance. Good health is abundance, right? Having a roof over your head is abundance. Having a family is abundance, right? Uh, I lost my, hold on a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been focusing too much on lack, where I started to think that I couldn't possibly get answers from this person because she doesn't want to talk for like seven months. Yeah, well, you're counting all the months that you haven't been talking. See, again, you're focusing on the lack of, of it. And, and you build momentum in that. If you've been sitting around seven months wondering about this, then, of course, that's seven months of momentum that you've been building in the direction of it not being there, in the direction of the lack of it. That's seven months. That's seven months of energy you've been feeding into this, right? So to, to turn it around, you need to start shifting it, right? But it's going to... The longer you do this, the trickier it kind of gets. It's not impossible, but the trickier it gets. But you start doing it now, right? Even I tried to talk to this person when we saw each other. And I can, oh, you probably saw them and you're like, oh, there they are, right? <laughs> and you kind of, maybe you, you were sort of trying to chat them or ask them a bunch of questions about the situation and why did this happen? Why did that happen? And they're like, whoa, you know? I'm guessing, I don't know, but from your comment, uh, you know, you're not specifying what happened there and what you talked about, but I can, I can sort of guess from the energy that you've been putting into this, the type of energy you've been putting into this. Um, and I can focus on a good thing. I 
I guess I can't focus on a good thing anymore because when I remember this person, I'm feeling hurt and like I lost my hope to solve this. Yeah, well, you're, see, when you're thinking about this person, um, you're thinking about, you know, how this is a failure. I, I screwed this up. I'm not good enough for this person. Um, it's beyond hope. I can't fix it. So yeah, so every time you think about this person or remember the times you had together, it makes you feel bad because you're thinking about the lack of it. That's what you're focused on. So you need to stop thinking about that person. You need to stop sitting around wondering when they're going to contact you. You need to start working on yourself. All right? Start meditating. Start taking care of yourself. Um, if you don't already, eat healthy and exercise. Get out there and learn something new. Do something new. Get involved in your hobbies and your passion. Go make new friends. Go date other people. Just date them. Just go on dates and have fun. All right? You don't have to date someone for months and months. Go meet people. Go be social. You know, get yourself a dog or a cat. Or if you have one already, go pet them. Play with them. Go on a trip. Okay? Focus on yourself. Sit down and think about what you really want out of yourself. What kind of person do you want to be? That's putting focus on yourself. And that's giving yourself love and attention. Right? The kind of love and attention you want them so desperately to give you so that you can have, feel permission to love yourself. You don't need anybody's permission, least of all theirs. You only need your permission. So start doing it. You know? And nothing is beyond hope. Nothing is beyond hope. Nothing is ruined. Nothing is unsalvageable. Okay? Hey, man, people go treasure hunting. They find treasure that's thousands of years old. It's still there. <laughs> it's waiting for you to find it. Pick it up. All right. Greek warrior, can you make some videos about the relationship between karma and law of attraction? Just curious. Since a lot of us are trying to manifest money, matter, and people wondering how that affects our karma. Well, I'll tell you something. Personally, I don't really buy into karma. But, uh, you know, that's... I mean, I understand karma to be something like a sort of a bank account, like uh, we somehow our guilt or good deeds carry on to other lives and into the afterlife. And no, I don't buy into that. That's, that's, these things are, um, okay, that's maybe for another video. It's kind of a deep one to get into, but I know in spiritual circles and karma is a very popular thing to kind of toss around. Um, as with anything, really, it comes down to what you believe. Karma doesn't affect me or my life or the people around me because I just don't think about it. I don't give it any focus or attention. And that's all it is. We live in a creative universe. Uh, and there is no sort of, oh, I did this 10,000 years ago in another body and identity and I'm somehow that guilt of this thing is being carried over to me now. So what? What? how is that a fair creative universe where uh, I'm being asked to... Uh, uh, pay for something that I don't remember doing. <laughs> maybe I did it, maybe I didn't. I mean, I don't buy into karma, to be honest with you. But um, we're all here co-creating. And, and we understand what we're doing. And we understand that this is kind of like a play we're all a part of. You know, it's sort of like you don't... You, you're not in a, in, a, in a sort of, I don't know, in a movie... Uh, you know, if you're an actor in a movie where you commit a crime or you play a villain or you do something to somebody... You know, when the shooting's over, the actors don't go on hating each other, right? <laughs> they go, hey, man, you shot me in that alleyway. And I'm like, well, we were just acting out of script, right? Of course, that's what we're doing. We're just acting out of script. Everything is love. There's no judgment. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around, and it's controversial when people say that kind of thing because we live still in that kind of society. This is what we've been reinforcing in ourselves this idea of justice and unfairness and victimization but it's always ever you victimizing yourself it's always ever that when you focus on again what really the problem is is that we don't teach people enough about their personal power and to accept themselves and to love themselves and that there shouldn't really be any need for competition in this world either that's another thing when people always go oh there was somebody else there was somebody else you know this competitive mindset that i need to somehow you know, outdo this other person, outwit this other person, they're going to take something away from me. You can't take anything away from anybody. You just can't. And no one can ever really take away the fundamental things from you. Those are love. That's your creative power. That's your freedom. It's never, ever really revoked from you. You're always giving permission for that. When it, when it feels like it's being revoked by somebody else, you're giving them permission to do it, right? Energetically, you're giving them permission to do it. But yeah, that's, uh, you're right. That's, I think, a subject for another video. I do want to get into that a little bit deeper because it's interesting. Maybe that'll be a podcast uh, episode, actually. 
Because then I can talk for hours and hours and hours. All right. Josh Reed. Uh, when we are in no contact with our specific person, been since July, counting the, all the days and times. Do you guys mark your calendar? Do you have like like when you're in prison, you put little lines and then on the fifth one you strike it out and then you have the next one? <laughs> How many days until I'm out? <laughs> All right, I'm pulling your leg. I've done this, so I'm not judging you. I'm not laughing at you. But, you know, learn to laugh at yourself a little bit, too. This stuff isn't so serious. What you think is so serious right now, it's not really that serious. You can laugh about it. Been in no contact since July. Uh, besides us running into each other at a local store and her watching my story Snapchats and her not commenting. So you're sitting around putting stuff on Snapchat and see, has she commented? Has she commented? Is she watching? Is she watching? Is she interested? What's that? What's that energy, Josh? Is that the energy of having it? Is that the energy of somebody who's sure that this thing is in the bag? Pfft. Is that the energy of someone who says, I'm a catch. I don't need to impress her. She, she's already impressed by me because I'm, I'm sexy. I'm a great guy. I'm a great catch. Is that that energy or is it the energy of someone? Your, your highness, please love me so I can love myself. Please contact me so I can feel relief and feel good. So think about it. think about the energy you're putting in when you're sitting around doing Snapchats. And I don't honestly know how Snapchat works, so I don't know. Posting on Snapchat, is that what you say? Or stories? or Anyway, whatever you're doing on Snapchat, you're obviously um, doing it, hoping she'll notice you, hoping she'll comment, right? And you're putting all this energy, feeding all this energy into the vibration of you need her approval. You need her approval. You need her approval. And when you have approval-seeking behavior, when you have that energy going on, you're always going to be looking for people's approval. And you're never going to give yourself permission to be happy and content and love yourself and accept yourself unless other people do it for you first and give you permission to do it. So think about it, right? Think about it from that perspective and see that maybe this is kind of how you've been going and that's why things aren't working out. Again, this is the same for all the comments I've read today in this video. The theme is there. Different versions of it, but it's the same theme. I've only gotten one reply for Christmas. So, you you know, you're, you're thinking way too much about this person. Are you focusing on yourself? What are you doing for yourself? How are you loving yourself every day? Shift your focus to that. Start asking yourself that question. What can I do today to demonstrate love for myself and acceptance of myself. What can I do today for myself? What can I give to myself today? All right? Not what can they give to me today? Do I reach out or let the universe bring us together again? You need to stop focusing on whether she's there or not, whether she's contacting you or not, whether she's posting things or commenting on your posts or not. You need to start focusing on yourself. You need to start feeling love for yourself. You need to start feeling acceptance for yourself. You need to start feeling yourself, seeing yourself as a catch and as a great person that she's obviously going to want to be with again. You need to stop to take the focus off what you should, what should I do, what should I not do. The thing you need to do is to learn to love yourself, is to focus on yourself, make yourself the best version of yourself that you can right now. Do whatever it takes. Go work out. Go, like I said before, find a passion and a hobby. M you know, make yourself bigger in your own eyes. Bigger than the thing, than the situation. More important than the thing and the situation. Right? And then you'll know when you feel good about this, when you're not focused on the lack of it so much, when you're not thinking about her all day long, and you're happy and content doing what you're doing, those answers will come to you. You'll know what to do intuitively. It'll be like something you can't help doing, but not in an urgent way, not in a desperate way, but in a way that's going to feel normal and natural and matter of fact and kind of like, oh, yeah, I should probably contact her and see what she's up to. I haven't thought about her in a little while because I've been too busy being awesome. <laughs> okay? That's when you'll know. And then you'll contact like, oh my God, da, 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 da. How's, how's it going? And then maybe you guys go and have a drink or meet up and maybe you guys see each other again. Maybe there's a little cuddling. Maybe there's a little kissing. Maybe something else goes on. And suddenly before you know it, boom, you're in each other's lives again. Right? And you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about this. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? That part is, you're right, that's for the universe to figure out. Let it guide you. But first you need to become a cooperative component. So let go, okay? Let go and focus on yourself. My foot's falling asleep. 
so I hope that helps Josh and all you guys. I hope that helps. And I think there were a couple more. Um, these are all kind of about the same, right? Um, yeah, Martha Lopez. Me and my ex were engaged and are supposed to be married by now. We broke up five months ago. I want to work things out with him. I'm constantly thinking about him. You're constantly, again, constantly thinking about him. How do I change this? How do I need get him to love me again? He's not loving me. Loving me, I can't be happy until he loves me. You're, and I'm, you're focused on how can I change this? How can I change this? And that's the vibration of actually you think what you're doing is problem solving. You think you're you're focused on the solution when you're actually focused on the problem, not any kind of solution. When you think about, what can I do to change this? What can I do to change this? What you're really saying is, this isn't the way I want it to be. This isn't the way I want it to be. This isn't the way I want it to be. So that's the energy that you're sending out there. It's important to learn this distinction and it can feel like a subtle nuanced distinction, but it's very important to learn this. You need to start learning to read your own emotions and your thought patterns and your vibrational patterns and see where, you know, which direction they're going in. Be, stop focusing on what they're doing. Start going inside and being like, wait a minute, so I'm having these thoughts all day. How, does it, how are they making me feel? And then what is that vibration matching to, right? Is it matching to them being there or me having the thing I want or is it matching to it not being here, right? What, what are these thoughts producing? Are they producing patience and, and relief and love no they're producing uh impatience desperation frustration right a lot of you guys out there i know you want the steps i know you want the and you know i know there's a lot of material out there you've seen that gives you the promise and then you try it and it doesn't seem to work and you know those people who are kind of selling that stuff aren't doing you any favors really what they should be saying is oh you want to manifest a specific person back, then you need to stop focusing on them. For most of you really coming to this, and you're coming freshly out of a relationship of breakups or whatever, even if it's been a little bit longer than just a few weeks or months, and you're still focusing on them, and you're still wondering, what do I do? And the best thing for you to do is to stop focusing on them. And I know that sounds, but if I stop focusing on them, then they won't come in. No, because you read somewhere that you need to focus on the thing you want and then it will come, but you're not, you misunderstood it probably, or it wasn't explained well enough because the thing is this, you focus on the thing you want in such a way that you feel like you already have it. You focus on already having it and you focus on the feelings of what you would feel if you already had the thing because that's what you're really after is that feeling and that state of being and that state of mind, right? That's what you need to focus on. But if just thinking about your person all day long in the context of they're not here, they're not here, they're not here is not focusing on what you want. That's focusing on the opposite of what you want. That's focusing on them not being here. They're not loving you. They're not calling you. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And again, by asking that question, you're perpetuating that. Start shifting the focus and start shifting the perspective and start asking different questions. How can I prepare for them to get here? Because they're going to get here. So how can I make myself the best version of myself so that they will enjoy being in a relationship with me too? How can I do that? What do I need to work on in myself to make myself a great boyfriend or girlfriend or husband? Right? That's one way to switch the perspective because now you're preparing. Hey, they're coming. That's assuming that they're coming or the thing is already done. So how do I prepare for it? Well, oh my God, I'll make myself... You know, I'll lose a bunch of weight. I'll make myself really happy. Because everybody wants to be in a relationship with someone who's happy and who loves themselves. Nobody wants to be in a relationship with somebody who's miserable and desperate and has low self-esteem and is clingy and pushy, right? Nobody. You don't want that either. Think about why you want to be in a relationship with them so much. Because probably they're the opposite of what you're kind of reflecting. Or maybe you see them as the opposite of what you're reflecting right now. You see them as confident and happy without you. And that's kind of how you want to be, right? So that's another... Of course, you're more pulled to them because of those qualities. So think about the qualities that they're displaying that, that attract you to them and start fostering those qualities in yourself because those are obviously attractive qualities, right?
how, oh, okay, um, I'm getting off track. How would my ex read my energy if I have, this is Martha still. Okay, how many days do we read the list of things we love about our ex before we move on to the next video? Well, you don't, you can watch all my videos. There's no order to my videos, okay? So this is not a sort of a watch this video, do this thing, and then maybe I said that in that video a year ago or something similar. But, um, you know, really, this isn't a question of doing it a certain uh, number of days and reading it a certain number of times, and then boom, that's the magic formula, and there they are, they appear in your life again. Again, you need to watch uh, my other videos and listen to my podcast episodes and... Um, you know, maybe read some other material on how manifesting really works. In fact, the last video I did on quantum sh shifting that explains a bit, uh, uh, hopefully in a simple way, about the manifestation process, This all the, the lists of them, you know, when I suggested making a list of their good qualities, that was sort of um, just for you, for your own purposes. I mean, these techniques and these lists and affirmations and visualizations, and I say this again and again, is is there to make you feel better, to shift your thinking, not to make them do anything, because they'll come into your life, and what you want will come into your life the moment you shift your perspective on the situation, the moment you stop worrying about whether they're there or not, the moment you start being happier within yourself, and you don't worry so much about them, that's when things start to shift, okay? So this isn't about doing it five times and then magic, all right? <laughs> it's not what this is about. And also, you don't have to do this and then move on to my next videos. You can watch all my videos in any order that you want, all right? I speak about this stuff from a perspective of really just looking at case-by-case -case situations because I think that's really helpful for, for demonstrating and and really focusing on what, what are the sort of basic elements and principles of manifesting anything and becoming a creator of anything is that it, it's all about you and changing your perspective on yourself and the world. And then the moment you work on that, you begin shifting that and turning that around, everything that you want comes in. Life becomes easier. It becomes smoother. Your relationships become better and smoother. That's not to say that problems don't pop up. They always will, but you'll deal with them differently. You won't be so reactionary, right? That's what it comes down to. That's what we're talking about here. How would my ex read my energy if I have no contact with him? Again, uh, and I've said this before, so I'll say it again, energy flows between people. We are all connected. And you're connected to everything in this universe. You're connected to me right now. I'm connected to you right now, even though we're not actually face-to-face, -face, are we? You're watching me on a video, on a recording, and I probably live somewhere completely different from where you live, and yet we have a connection, right? If you think about you, have you ever thought about somebody and then suddenly they call? Maybe somebody you haven't thought, you know, thought about in a while, haven't seen in a while. They call you or text you or you suddenly see them on the street. Pretty much everyone has a story like that. That's because, yes, there was a connection there. There was an energetic connection. So people can read your energy. Most, of us people, most people aren't aware that they can do that because they're not aware of their power to do that. But, um, and, you know, in our society, in our culture, we've been taught to move away from the invisible and only focus on the visible which is why so many of us have problems with this, all right? I'm not against science or anything like that, but this thinking that we fostered in modern times of, uh, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, it has been detrimental to us as people, and especially as creators. And we need to find a balance between sort of the unseen world, the spiritual side of things, and yes, the scientific side of things. I'm starting to see that balance come into focus more and more, but we really need to look at both ways of being, right? Because only thinking one way and only thinking the other obviously doesn't work. And it hasn't been working. <sighs> so how does this work? This works by you calming down, focusing on yourself, start meditating. Read as much about this as you can. Gather as much information as you can. Educate yourself. Study. Information is power. Um, and working on yourself. You work on yourself. You stop focusing on them and what they're doing, whether they're there or not. Things Sometimes things do happen for a reason. If you guys broke up and you're supposed to be married by now, maybe something was going on there. There was some energetic stuff going on that wasn't going to make it a, a very happy marriage. And maybe sometimes the universe goes, okay, let's separate these two so they can work on each other and on themselves separately and then see if they want to come back together. They'll be better people and they'll have a better marriage, a better relationship, right? Sometimes the things that seem bad are actually happening um, for our own good, but we just don't see it, right? 
Okay. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry if I missed anybody. Um, I do need to wrap this up. Look at this. It's 50 minutes. I think these usually go like 20, 25 minutes. So um, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope that made sense to all of you out there. I'm going to get out and do some yard work um, in this beautiful weather. Get some sunshine. Um, but thank you for all the comments. Please keep them coming. Um, somebody mentioned, uh, people have been mentioning, why don't you have thousands of subscribers? You know, I'm letting this channel grow organically the way it needs to. And, um, and you know, I have way more subscribers than I did just a month or two ago. Um, so it is growing steadily. Um, I see it growing every day or every other day. There seem to be like five to 10 more subscribers. So, um, I don't worry about that stuff so much. You see, that's kind of what I'm talking about too. You don't think so much about a lack. I could tell myself all day, oh my God, it's not growing, it's not growing. And you know what starts to happen is it starts to stall out when I do that. And if I go, oh wow, man, I start celebrating every subscription that comes in, then it grows more steadily and more rapidly, right? And also, you know, I don't want to just appeal to every, anybody. I mean, I want kind of the people that need to find me will find me. The people that need to hear my specific version or style of, of the message will will find me, right? I'm just putting myself out there and opening myself up to you guys energetically and just letting you kind of come in, bounce around uh, as much as you like, all right? So it's not so much about me or my ego here. Um, it's more about, you know, finding the right people, connecting with them, um, and trying to make the message as clear as possible and really helping you guys, right? And hopefully if I do this well, one day most of you won't even need to watch my videos anymore. <laughs> I was taught this, a good teacher makes himself obsolete. Strange, huh? But it's true if you think about it. All right, um, and on that note... Um, <laughs> Uh, I do like money, so if you want to leave me a tip, uh, you'll find two links in the description box below. Uh, one is for PayPal, one is for the Cash App, whichever one you feel most comfortable using, and any amount is appreciated, and thank you very much in advance for that. Also, uh, you can find a, a list of recommended books um, on my website. There's also, I, I have one-on-one -on -one email coaching, so if you want to have like a little email chat with me, um, you can actually purchase a couple packages um, one email exchange, two email exchanges, three email exchanges. So that's on my website as well. You'll see the link for that, manifestationlab.com. Down below, uh, I'm doing another podcast episode soon. And for those of you new to the channel, um, those podcasts live on Spotify, Podbean, and in the iTunes store. And you'll find links for that also below. Um... And if you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do. So, yes, I do tell people to subscribe. I do like subscribers. <laughs> but that's all it takes, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and that's about all I have to say for today. I'm going to get out in the sunshine. And uh, maybe you should do the same. All right. Go do some something fun. Okay? I love you guys. Take care.